I just want to know how come uh, on our website, when you go to buy a computer, why is why we list the certain specs that we list? Why is that? Why is that computer standard in the industry that you list? Uh, you know how how much RAM the computer has. Why is it a computer? Why is it industry standard uh, to say how big the solid state drive is or how big the drive is on the computer mm-hmm. when external hard drives exist? Why why do these things matter? Okay, so you get to the website. The question is, you get to you pick the form factor or the type of computer, but then when you get to actually selecting the individual components of the computer, there's some stuff like the CPU, the RAM, and the uh, drive, right? Yeah, that you have to choose from. Most it's people, confusing. most people can look at the computer and say, "Yeah, that I uh, I see how much it weighs, and I see how big it is, and I like the form factor of it." So that's my computer for me. Right. They get ready to buy it. It's like, oh, well, would you like the one with uh, an i five processor? Would you like one with an i seven processor? Would you like an uh, um, with yeah. uh, five four gig four gigabytes of RAM? Right. Like, like, well, what what is all this? It's like buying a car. It's like you're, um, you know. It has all these specif- specs on it, but you don't know what they really mean, right? Yeah, all it's I like, want is the computer. I don't, right. and, and obviously, um, the the i seven is a bigger number than the i five, mm-hmm. and it has a bigger price tag. Therefore, I should want the i seven, right? I, I'd say we back up one second, just because the first choice in uh, deciding on what computer is is just the form factor. It's like what will you be using it for, and that form factor will typically drive um, what computer to pick. Mm-hmm. So, um, humor me for a second. So. In picking the computer, you sort of pick from um, either like a very highly mobile computer to a uh, uh, engineering computer, scientific, AutoCAD, video processing, and those are the spectrums between the two bookends. And what's in the middle is more like a the average computer, which is ninety five percent of it. Mm-hmm. But you're right, though. Once you pick one of those like forms or uh, roles of the device, you got to pick like the details of it, which are usually those three things: the the uh, CPU. Um, it's usually just a processor name. It has a like it'll say Intel um, i7, right? Yeah. It'll have the hard drive, and then it'll have the RAM. Those are the three things. So your question is, what are those three things, right? Yes. Okay. Why? Why? Why are those the three things that that yeah. we're judging this on? Um, so all those three things work in uh, harmony with each other. They all have to be um, uh, work, and it's a t- it can be a complicated subject, and we can get in those details if you want to. But typically, those three things, those three things work together. Um, the, let's start with the hard drive, the drive. So today's modern computers are typically SSD or solid state drives. They're, um, they're drives that are um, electronic. There's no moving parts in them. Traditional computers have always had moving parts in them, like uh, uh, platters with spinning disk in them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, most computers, very recently, even still today, you can still buy computers with spinning media in them. The surface line are all SSD drives. That's one big difference between them. And so, and those SSD drives are very, very fast. The, the choices between the SSD drives are just the, the, the size of them. And if you think about our analogy here about, um, let's use our food analogy, um, the SSD is like where you're going to store all of your food in the pantry. So okay. it's about how much food you can, or how much stuff or programs that you can store in your pantry. Okay. Yeah, how much data you can store in your, your pantry. Mm-hmm. So um, 512, one terabyte, those are typically the sizes you see today. Um, five, and most stuff you store, you can store in the cloud too, so you don't have to store it in your pantry. You can store it like in, say, Amazon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's a bad analogy when we're a Microsoft shop. So is your... Azure. <laughs> but uh, the idea is that you can get any of the food items you want on demand, like very easily, um, without having to, you can have your dog food ordered and delivered with you by that today, you know, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like putting your stuff up in the cloud. Um, it's not accessible in your pantry, but you can get it really quick. So with a cloud, you necessarily don't need a really big pantry anymore. You don't need to store stuff for the winter because um, the availability of getting the stuff is easy to get. Mm-hmm. So hard drives are typically like 512 gigs or one terabyte. It's usually the choices. And you, sometimes you might want a two terabyte drive. But those are the options for a hard drive. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. What was our next thing? We needed the hard drive. We need hard drive for and, putting the food in yeah. the pantry. The RAM is next. The RAM. RAM um, what is RAM? Random stand? access memory. Okay. Computer term. It's brought over the years. Probably doesn't mean a lot to most, but but RAM is it's temporary storage. When you turn your computer off, the RAM goes away. It's completely disappears. Mm-hmm. Um, it's probably like putting your food on a plate. So you take your stuff out of the pantry. You put your stuff on the plate. You make a dinner, and you you're processing the food from the plate. Um, as soon as the day is over, the plate gets cleared and put away. Okay. And so um, um, 
you want a big enough plate to put enough food on it for the programs that you're running. And uh, so, okay, so it's Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. It's showtime. This is this is the event of the year. Yeah. So I'm loading up my plate with a, a turkey leg, <laughs> a mashed potato. I knew this food analogy would work with you. Yes, always. So I got the turkey leg, the mashed potatoes. I got the uh, green bean casserole, and um, uh, sweet potato souffle. That's all on my plate. That's the ram. Yeah. So for you, like some people are small eaters and they um, don't need a big plate. <laughs> and then most people, well, you um, want really big plates. And so to put all that stuff on your plate, you're going to need more ram. Yeah, I'm and, hungry. I'm a yeah. big guy. I'm hungry. I'm, yeah. I'm, so ram typically comes in sizes of today's four gigs, uh, 16 gigs, 32 gigs. Those are kind of what you hear people talk about. That's quite a jump yeah. from four gigabytes to 16. Yeah. Typically, I would look at them as either... Um, four gigs. Well, there's four, eight, and 16. I'd say the three flavors. And, and this okay. is just the size of the plate. Size of the plate. Size of the plate. Um, four gig. There's some, I, that, I'm trying to figure out how we get into this. It's, there's also a computer architecture. Um, uh, X, you've heard the saying called 32-bit computers and versus 64-bit computers. Yes. There's some um, uh, limits on how much, how big a plate can be. The processor, let me back up a second. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So, you are the consumer eating that meal at Thanksgiving. Yes. You're, you're the computer. You're the processor, the CPU. I'm the CPU? You're the CPU. And the CPU is how fast that you can eat this food. Mm -hmm. So um, in, <laughs> okay. a computer, in a computer's <laughs> terms, uh, usually you buy a processor that can eat food really fast because you want your programs and things you're trying to get done quickly. You want to get your food consumed as quickly as Your family's as annoying you. You, gotta get, <laughs> right. you just wanted to make an appearance. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's the processor. All right. Um, so the there is some limits on um, you'll hear this term about thirty two bit computers versus sixty four bit computers. Yes. Um, typically, most new operating systems, most new computers you buy are just going to come with sixty four bit by default. Okay, which is um, a computer that can address um, more memory. So if you want to really use more than four gigs of memory, you need a sixty four bit computer. So if you go to eight or sixteen, you need a sixty four bit computer. So it's probably not relevant because... What, is, so is that like a, a person who's uh, uh, telling me, no, 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 you, you, you're not getting that plate? Is that, is that what it's doing? Uh, yeah. That plate's too big. We're you're, in this transition right now with technology that, um, that there's still a lot of legacy computers that are running 32-bit uh -huh. and um, plate certain plate sizes. Mm -hmm. And the computers are processing so much more information so quicker at, um, that the 64-bit um, architecture is um, becoming more standard. We're sort of in this thing right now. All right, so eventually we won't even have yeah. to care about it. It won't be an issue. It probably is an issue for most people. Most modern operating systems come with 64-bit. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you download a program, it'll say, do you want the 32-bit or 64-bit version? Yeah. There's a reason because behind that. If you install a 32-bit application, it can only address 4 gigs of memory at once. So if you're um, trying to use a program uh, like a big spreadsheet, which would have to be a gigantic spreadsheet to consume 4 gigs of memory at once, but there are people out there that do it, and there's some in this office that can do that. What, what if I stick a video in there? If, is that the same thing, or is that using a different part of the... Uh, the, the videos are more streaming. So they're using the information as they're just processing information. Like, a video is like uh, a single pictures processed over and over very fast, right? Mm -hmm. uh, frame rate. And so they're streaming through the computer. They're not like... Um, you're not manipulating the whole video all at once. So it's not being the whole video is not being stored in memory at once. Oh, typically, I got you. Okay, it's being pulled off something, process it, and then push back down. Mm -hmm. um, one one slide at a time, kind of like a, a a projector. It's going one video frame at a time. All right. So let, let me let me let me reset the scene here. Okay. Thank you. We are. It's Thanksgiving. Okay. The pantry is full. I have a a, a solid state drive, um, with two hundred and fifty six gigabytes. That's a Right, is you're that probably a, 512 or <laughs> one terabyte? Okay. So it's just that you're either a small, a medium cupboard or a large cupboard. Okay, so uh, let's say I got a large cupboard, one terabyte drive, totally stout. Okay, one terabyte drive, and you're using the latest technology SSD, which is the fast kind of cupboard. You can get in and out of that cupboard really fast. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's a modern, it's a new kitchen. Okay, and the RAM is the plate. The RAM is the plate. So put I load up my plate with because uh, I the uh, program. Program. I got a large plate. I got a large RAM, yeah, which is the program you retrieved from the uh, cupboard. So it's the food that you retrieved out of the cupboard. How did it get there? 
uh, you went out and you gave an instruction to the computer to tell, go get it out of the cover and put it on the plate. What's, is that a, just a program that runs? Or? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so that's where I am. Now I have the food on my plate. Right. Now what? Now what? How do I get the food into my mouth? Okay, so you're a processor. You're the computer, remember? I'm the computer. Yeah, and so your processor can consume uh, the food at a certain speed. Mm -hmm. So you'll see that in the processors, the Intels, they'll have like, um, and there's AMD uh, as well and uh, ARM chips as well. There's different manufacturers of chips, but they're just different like types of people Mm -hmm. are the processors. But we'll keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple for a second. Um, but it, the processors, typically you'll see like i5, i9, all these different numbers, yeah. uh, i7s. Um, they're really just about how fast and efficient that they can process this food. And so like eating your mouth, you grab your, with your hand, you grab the food uh, or your fork and knife, I suppose, is probably more. Well, well no, maybe, maybe not because it's like an i5, like grabbing it with your hand and an i7 is grabbing it with a fork or something? Kind of. Um, like with my hand, I can get more. Of. You'll hear this thing about mem- uh, computers having cash on it. Like it's a, what happens is it's it's a costly thing for you to reach down to get your food and then put it in your mouth. Like mm-hmm. that takes uh, um, a certain amount of effort to do that. It's like in a in a computer, everything works off a clock cycle, so um, time mm-hmm. and um, it you it's, it's it's a amount of instruction to go grab the food and then put it in your mouth. That takes two operations to do that in a sense, right? Okay. Yeah, to grab so and then some put. computers are getting more efficient about as you're eating the food in your mouth, it's already going down to reach to get the next bite. <laughs> so right with my you. second hand. Yeah. So, all right, I got one hand in the food. No, I have one hand that's already get, putting food in my mouth. Right. I'm, this is still the process. Right. And then this other hand, while I'm doing that, it's already got food ready to go. Yeah. It's like, it's off the plate. It's just ready yeah. to be shuffled in. And there's some processors that may even put like a big handful in your mouth and you've got this handful waiting to go in your mouth while the other one's still grabbing one too. It's like, it's about the efficiency of you consuming that, that food or that, that data as, as efficiently as possible. Okay. Now let's, let's, let's kick it up a notch. Okay. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Uh, uh, duo cores, dual cores and dual quad cores. cores. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are those are just processors. Yeah, that's like having your friends over to help you eat your to help me eat my food. Yeah. So there's uh, they're still as, do they have their own plates or is it no, still my plate? They have to use your plate. They're using my plate. Uh huh. And so they're they're just helping me throw food in <laughs> yes. my face as fast as possible. They are. They are. Uh, 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 basically, dual cores or quad cores are just the number of CPUs that are. Uh, CPU um, means uh, central processing units. Think of them as you and your friends. So every time you add a core, um, it's, adding, oh, oh, it's so, adding another friend. So when I say processor, that's actually short for CPU? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, that's good. Um, so having a quad core, which means four, it's just having four friends. Having you, you and your friends are a total of four. So it's having four people eat off your plate at once. Okay. Now that's con- but, but all feeding me. Yeah. Now but, it could be confusing. You're saying, well, what's the outcome of all this, right? Yes. Like, you know, you're processing the well, food. Well, I, I know what the outcome will be, but. <laughs> it's going to be a chaos for sure. <laughs> um some programs, which is the, the function of why you're eating the food, mm-hmm. it's like you're out to output some sort of work, you know, like it's um, um, a piece of software, an application, um, um, try to think of an application as an example, but, you know, like Office Suite or like a, a, a game or, a, um, you know, AutoCAD. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, the higher end applications can take advantage of your friends is they can... Um, take their program and cut it up in a way or parallel process it and give um, pieces of their software to your friends and have them process this information um, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Most programs operate one CPU at a time. So they can only deal with one person. They can, you know, they're very single threaded. um, And in fact, they call that threading. What kind of computer would that be? Uh, Well, most modern, the modern computer or the, the computers have all started off just being one processor. And then they, as they got uh, more sophisticated, they added this idea of friends coming along to the dinner mm-hmm. um, so that they could, these programs, these programs took advantage of having more friends over. Mm-hmm. The, the programs have to be designed to work with those friends, though. You can't, if you, most, not all programs can work with friends. Mm-hmm. Um, but Windows can take advantage of your friends, too. Windows is the um, underlying uh, rules of how your friends work together, you know, like whether they play nice together. Mm-hmm. Um, Windows is sort of like that task manager to make sure it's like the mom and dad. It's like making sure that 
um, everybody's behaving correctly. That's what the job of the operating system is. Oh, okay. And it's basically saying, hey, you're allowed to go. Can I have permission to go use the uh, cupboard? Can I have permission to go invite my friend over? Um, I have permission to, to eat off my plate. Um, and you play by the rules. That's mm-hmm. what a uh, operating system does. Um, I'm trying to figure out where I was going with this. Um, your, so your friends, the, the programs, not all programs can utilize all your friends. So uh, Windows, your parents will divvy up some of the work uh, and have a certain program isolated just for your one friend. Mm-hmm. It's like, let's give your friend one task to do. So the, my one friend could be pouring gravy on the mashed potatoes. Right. That would be... That's a great example. That's what he does. Yeah, that's all he does. That's or he or does. maybe he does that for a little while, then you, then your parents give him another task to do, like go do something else, go pour some water. Okay. You know, And so they're, they're simple tasks or programs that are um, they're just dedicated for that one friend. But some of your programs that are out there can take advantage of um, using all your friends all at once. Mm-hmm. So they, um, I can't, it's hard to figure out an example in that analogy, but um, it can take advantage of using all the resources all at once in parallel. Uh, it's, well, we've been, ta- we've been talking it's about... so high level to bear sort of picking a computer. Those three options on picking your yeah. device, <laughs> no, so no, we right. get in this conversation about all your friends coming over, right? It's, it's compl- it can, it, you can make it complicated. Well, but, uh, I... I uh, from a separate conversation, I think what it is is we were talking about how um, it just does one operation um, every uh, clock cycle. Clock cycle, right? Is it? But it's like it, you could do like a billion cycles it, a second. That's a great point. So you'll, um, if you were to, you used to see these little numbers behind the CPUs. It would say like uh, one gigahertz or two gigahertz, mm-hmm. um, um, and that's a that's a clock cycle. So it's the speed of a sine wave. Um, a wave it can do i think going to gigahertz like a billion um a cycles a second mm-hmm. and so a computer will operate on a billion instructions a second that's how much information it's processing per second a billion mm-hmm. a two gigahertz processor is going to be processing two billion instructions a second so all this is about moving things around like moving the food around um you know a billions of times a second um and that's kind of where I get to where, why does this thing even matter? So when you get into these billions, um, you know, how much is a billion and how much is two billion? Like if you and I had a billion dollars and you said, hey, would I, would two billion dollars make a difference in my life if I already had a billion? Mm-hmm. I'd probably say probably not because um, unless I was doing something real useful with that billion dollars, I don't think um, having double a billion dollars would make a difference in your life, right? Right. Like probably a million dollars would be make a difference in your life, but when you get right now, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) But a billions, when you get multiple billions, it just doesn't really matter anymore, right? It doesn't. It's it does matter, but it doesn't. You know what I'm saying? So it it matters to to a very specific select group of people. That's a good point. So when you're picking a computer, and and 95% of what people do are going to be well under those billions of numbers. Mm-hmm. And so these computers are evolving so fast and becoming so quick that having these, um, these gigahertz and uh, multiple core processors and all these things are very for very specific needs. And so, um, you know, I think for most people, to, when they buy a computer, they just need a normal computer. They just need one that does a billion instructions, not, not you know, two billion instructions. Mm-hmm. That help. That does help. So, what you're saying is, on on the one end, you got um, a Surface Go, mm-hmm. which will uh, it's a good computer for running one or two applications. It is. It's um it has a, a simpler processor in it, mm-hmm. has less memory in it. Um, hard drive might be a smaller pro- uh, hard drive that's available to it, mm-hmm. but it's designed to run one or two applications really well. That's yeah. what it does. Um, if you talk to some of our, we had a podcast a few weeks ago where we had, um, Steve from support, he was talking about how he has, um, you know, 10 applications open on his desktop at once and he's flipping between them all on multiple screens and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I sat there and thought, I was like, he's not everyone, you know, that he's Steve. That's what, that's what he does. Right. He's remoting into a different computer and doing all sorts of Yeah. I mean, how many people are like him that, um, use a computer that way? And so he, I would say he's more extreme computer user. And so some of those little numbers that we're picking matter to him. Mm-hmm. But he, I bet he, but he still runs his off of a Surface Pro. Yeah, he does. Which shows like just how powerful the machines have gotten. Right. Because the Surface Pro is what we, it's, it's, it's what you said, the 95, it's the bell curve. It's yeah. right, right in the center, yeah. right? Um, 
And people who are uh, curious about buying uh, Surface devices or Surface accessories, where can they go? We have a store. So that's something new we set up this year is a store where you can buy all of these devices. Mm -hmm. And that's um, uh, you can reach it from our main website. Just click the shop button or you can go directly there with shop.protectedtrust.com. And there you'll find all the Surface devices and um, sort of an overview about what them are. And there's also a button there if you have a question. There's a little chat thing down there. You can ask questions or you can, again, schedule a meeting if you want to talk to somebody and we'll help you pick out the right one. 